Today we're going to be looking at one of the Raspberry Pi 5 starter kits by Vimico and put it together. This video is meant for newcomers to Raspberry Pi as we're going to unbox and then set up the Vimico Raspberry Pi starter kit. What's it got coming with it? It's got heat sinks and it's got a fan and it's got a charger, HDMI cable to mini HDMI as well. Then we've got a little Phillips screwdriver a micro SD USB reader for your PC to plug into and install the Pi software. And then the micro SD card itself is a SanDisk Ultra 32 gig, which is a pretty good little card. And I always recommend SanDisk as a micro SD option. And then we have the case. I do like the transparent Pi case. It looks decent, but I really wonder how reliable it is. And then we've got the actual Pi 5 itself. This is the eight gigabyte model. And depending on your project with the Pi, it may not really need that much RAM. There are other RAM sizes you can purchase as well, but this kit in particular comes with the eight gigabyte. Now the Pi 5 obviously has a USB-C for power and the two HDMI ports, which can do 4K at 60 Hertz, a gigabit ethernet. It's got two USB 3.2 slots and two USB 2.0. And then you have your GPIO input. The Pi 5 also comes with a, a PCIe slot now, but you might need an expansion card to make it work. For example, there is the NVMe base that allows you to add a solid state drive to it, but we're just gonna be putting this together today and I didn't purchase that. The kit's fan is 30 millimeters, which is pretty handy on the Pi 5 models because they tend to run hotter than the previous models. And if you plan on putting a high load on them, then you're probably gonna need one. And as mentioned, this also comes with heat sinks, which in just a second we'll put on. There we go, much better. I'd recommend you start with the small ones on the right and then work your way out to the left on the bigger uh, heat sinks. It's gonna be easier to put those on after. And all you have to do is just tear off the tape and then just fit them accordingly to their size. So now that we have the heat sinks on, let's put on the case. Unfortunately, <laughs> the case is not very good. It's made of very thin plastic and it's in layers. And honestly, it's just really not clear how to install it. I tried looking at the pictures. There aren't any guides, it seems online. And ultimately when I was working on it, one of the plastic layers fell to the ground about three feet below and it actually broke it. So <laughs> we're not gonna use this case today. Instead, we're gonna take some time and try a 3D printed case instead. Now I looked online and it doesn't really seem that there's too many options to choose from for a Pi 5 right now that specifically have a 30 millimeter fan slot. However, I was able to find this print and it said it supports a fan and it looks pretty cool. So onto the printer it went. And today I decided to try out the Matter Hackers Quantum PLA, which is a dual filament color blend. And I have this set to a PLA silk setting because these kind of extrude like a silk PLA, which means that basically um, they're just a lower, little bit lower temperature and a little bit lower or slower printing speed than your average PLA. The print came out looking pretty cool Cool, but one side got messed up and I'm not sure exactly why but it's probably a speed issue once I got it all snapped in uh, the tolerance didn't seem to be quite right I realized there's not really actually a way to mount the 30 millimeter fan there's no screw holes or anything so unfortunately this case isn't going to cut it for this kit so I went scouring printables for another case and found this one here which looks pretty thick but it does have threading for the fan, and it's got some decent vent designs on the side. It also has a stand you can print for it, so I decided to print this one, and sure enough, it does seem to work pretty well, but you need some additional hardware because this case doesn't snap in directly and the screws that came with the Pi 5 kit aren't gonna cut it. You have to use four M2 and a half six millimeter screws for mounting the Pi itself to the bottom of the case. And then you're going to have to use four M3 10 millimeter screws for the fan specifically, and then four M3 16 millimeter screws for the case itself. Uh, this little clip here is actually gonna go onto this part, this tiny little guy here. So that's why I got these tweezers. So you just need to kind of come in here and kind of just yeah, pull that off. And then it'll just fit right in there. Just make sure it lines up properly. The little uh, pins there you want them facing down or like 
basically the the closest uh, edge they are to. And then you just take this and put it in. Should be able to get it okay with your finger, fingers. And then put that over the top. And obviously we've got to put the screws in there. So once I had that all together, I decided to print out the stand and it recommends using TPU and the only color I had is bright red. But it actually looks pretty cool, the contrast between the two. Just keep in mind, if you're gonna print this case and you decide to print the stand, you are going to need to increase the size if you're printing it in anything besides TPU or flex. Probably gonna need to increase it to 101 or 102%. So I think the print turned out pretty well after a little bit of cleanup and the case stand holds the pie very snugly so it's not going to go anywhere. And we're going to plug in the, obviously we're going to put in the uh, SD card here in the slot which is easily accessible through here. It's nice you can actually get your like finger in here so and the power button is easily pressable too so pretty cool. While the outside of it really looks pretty, I haven't really gotten a chance to set up the pie itself now. I mean, I'm planning to make this into my home firewall with OpenWRT and a couple of USB to Ethernet adapters. There's an excellent channel I found called Vantech Corner that has video instructions for this. So check that out if you're interested. So do you have any Raspberry Pis? Are you planning to get one? Do you have any projects in mind? Or is the cost just too expensive to justify the purchase? Recently, there's been a lot of alternative boards that are competing pretty heavily with the Pi. So it's possible it may be at the tail end of its lifespan. But the incredible thing about the Pi 5 is it can do HVEC decoding and it has two HDMI ports that can do 4k at 60 hertz so it can be a decent device for media streaming or game streaming using steam link or moonlight that's something i would like to try out as well and there's one other thing that the competitors don't really have which is a large community base you know the pi does have that and that means more support and that means more applications and more possibilities so to wrap this video up I think the Vimico kit itself is pretty handy for newcomers since it contains everything you need to get going, but I would suggest considering getting a different case if you decide to get it, or maybe they'll provide some instructions that further detail how to actually put it all together without breaking it. So that's going to do it for this review, and I'll catch you on the seaside.